In the previous video, I mentioned that I can still remember the date that Anders Dale explained how we can understand source localization using linear algebra. We just multiply the vector of observed voltages by the inverse of the weight matrix to estimate the distribution of voltage along the cortical surface. But Anders also explained the problem with this approach. The matrix of weights can't actually be inverted. This is related to the fact that the inverse problem has an infinite number of solutions. As a result, we have to choose a pseudo-inverse, which requires additional constraints. The problem is that we don't have a perfect way of doing this that exactly matches the realities of the brain. At best, the additional constraints are not known to be true. At worst, they're known to be false. One common approach is called the minimum norm. This approach solves a major problem that happens when you have patches of cortex on opposite sides of a sulcus, like sources 15 and 16 here. Since these patches point in opposite directions, they'll produce opposite polarity potentials on the scalp. And if they're both activated approximately equally, they'll just cancel each other out. For any value we assume for source 15, we can cancel it out with approximately the same value for source 16. As a result, it's hard to come up with a unique voltage for source 15. The minimum norm approach solves the inverse problem by choosing a set of values at each source that minimizes the overall level of activity across the vector of sources, S. We quantify the overall level of activity by taking the norm of S, and we choose the solution with the smallest norm, that is, the minimum norm solution. Another solution is Loretta, which stands for Low Resolution Electromagnetic Tomography. Loretta is based on the idea that nearby patches of cortex typically have similar levels of activation. In other words, the pattern of activation changes relatively smoothly from patch to patch. Loretta chooses the set of activation values that's maximally smooth. In other words, the solution with the smallest differences between adjacent patches. So which solution is correct, minimum norm or Loretta? That's the problem. We have no reason to believe that either of these solutions captures the true distribution of activity across the cortex in every situation, or even in any single situation. This brings up the fundamental problem with almost every mathematical approach to source localization. They provide no principled measure of the accuracy of the solution. Would you take a mean reaction time seriously if the researcher couldn't provide some kind of error bars? So it's hard to take these source localization solutions very seriously. This problem has been addressed more recently by source localization methods that use Bayes' theorem. These methods provide a principled estimate of the posterior probability distribution of the activity given the observed data. But these methods aren't used very commonly. The lack of a principled measure of accuracy doesn't invalidate all uses of source localization. Source localization methods can be useful for showing that the observed data are consistent with a given generator site, even if other source configurations might also be able to explain the observed data. So if you read an ERP paper and it makes strong claims about the location of an ERP effect, you should be skeptical. But if the paper merely states that the data are consistent with a given location, that's usually fine. Check out this paper as an example. The bottom line is that the ERP technique is not well suited for answering questions about neuroanatomy. Its strength is temporal resolution, and the highest impact ERP studies take advantage of this strength and avoid the weakness of poor spatial resolution.